Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of Object Oriented Programming. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about the topic Inheritance. So we will see what is inheritance, different types of inheritance, then the importance and usage of super and protected keywords related to inheritance and then we will conclude. First of all, we will see what is inheritance and how we can implement inheritance when we do programs. We have defined inheritance before when we discussed about the object oriented programming concepts. It is one of the most important concept when we talk about object oriented programming. Inheritance is a property or a mechanic we can define it as a mechanism by which one class can acquire the properties of another class. So when we say that one class acquire the properties of other, we mean we can build one class based on another class. That's the main idea behind inheritance. We can create new classes based on existing classes. So when we say that one class inherit another class, what we mean is we can reuse the methods and variables and other things that was already defined in one class in this new class. Along with the already defined methods and variables in the parent class, we can add our own new methods and fields in the new class also. So that is how inheritance becomes very important. We can use up all the already existing features. Along with that, we can add up more features, more new features. So inheritance represents and is a relationship between the parent class and child class okay and we often refer to as parent child relationship for example a car is a vehicle so vehicle is the parent class and car is the child class okay for example and uh, another example is orange is a fruit so here fruit is a parent class and orange is the subclass so that is what we mean by is a relationship between the parent class and the child class. Oh, I didn't define what is a parent class and what is a what is a child class. That we will see very soon. Why we have to use inheritance in Java? That's an important question that we have to ask ourselves when we study inheritance. Inheritance is mainly used for two things. One is method overriding, which is also known as runtime polymorphism. And the second point is it is used for code reusability. We know what's the meaning of reusability. If we say something is reusable, that means we can use that many, many times, many number of times. So code reusability means we can use the same code any number of times. And that is possible just because of inheritance. And method overriding. We know what is method overloading. Method overloading is a concept of having more than one method with the same name within the same class. But their parameter list would be different. By means of inheritance, we can implement method overriding. What is method overriding? That we will study very soon. Method overriding is also known as runtime polymorphism. I had mentioned about compile time polymorphism or static polymorphism when we discussed about method overloading. Method overloading means it is it takes place when we compile the program. So it is said to be compile time polymorphism or static polymorphism. Method overriding is said to be runtime polymorphism or dynamic polymorphism. I mentioned something like child class and parent class in the previous slide. So now we will define what is a child class and what is a parent class. Child class or subclass is a class which inherits the other class. That means the new class that we create which copies the properties from the already existing class. The new class is said to be the child class or the subclass and already existing class from which we copy the features that class is known as a super class or the parent class i hope the definition is clear 
now how to implement inheritance when we write programs for that we have to use one keyword and that keyword is known as extends so whenever you see this keyword in a program make sure that it is inheritance so this is how we have to write class subclass name or the child class name then extends and then the parent class name or the super class name so when we write like this what we mean is this subclass is going to inherit the parent class the subclass is going to copy all the methods and variables inside the super class and along with that this class is going to define its own variables and methods so when we say the subclass is going to inherit or copy the methods and variables inside the super class we have to think about the access control keywords public private and protected if a method or a variable is declared by means of private keyword in super class it is not possible to inherit that it is the property of that private keyword that we have discussed when we discussed about access control keywords but all those variables and methods which are declared as public or default or protected those methods and variables will be copied to this subclass i hope it is clear so this is how we have to create or we have to write when to implement inheritance we have to use the keyword extends okay so along with the subclass name we have to add or combine two things one is the extends keyword and the other one is the parent class name the class which this subclass is going to inherit i hope we all, uh, you all know the meaning of the word extend extend means what we have something already we are adding something more with the already existing things that is what we mean by extend right to extend something to extend a help right so extends means we have already some features along with that we are adding some more so you can think that that way also already this parent class will have so many methods and variables all those variables and methods depending upon the access control keyword will be available for the subclass along with that the subclass can add more variables and methods so that is the power of inheritance we will see an example of inheritance and how it is done in java we have one class the class name is employee inside that class we have one variable named salary its data type is float and it has got some value say 40000 and see we are going to create a new class the class name is programmer and we are inheriting the class employee that is by means of this keyword extends so extends employee this means employee is a parent class and programmer is a subclass and we are declaring a new variable then the variable name is bonus and its data type is int and it is inside its value is 10000 and it is inside this class programmer and we are going to create the object of class programmer that is a subclass that we have created just now so class name object name equal to new constructor as you can see there is no constructor written by myself inside this class so in that case this constructor is the default constructor given by the java virtual machine okay so we are creating one object the object name is p and now how we are accessing the variables p dot salary this variable salary is not defined inside the class programmer okay then how can we access this variable by using the object of class programmer it is because of the inheritance property when we extend the class employee all the variables and methods inside that class, class employee is available for class programmer also okay so we are reusing this variable inside this class because of this inheritance property so when we write like p dot salary we are actually accessing the variable salary which this programmer got from the parent class employee so we will get the value 40000 gets printed here 
and then we will be accessing p dot bonus this bonus is actually a variable of class programmer itself so when we create the object of class programmer a copy of this variable will be available for all the objects of this class programmer okay so why we are able to access p dot salary I mean salary by means of the object p because p is the object of class programmer we have created the object here and programmer is the subclass of class employee so all the variables and methods that are defined as either public or default or protected will be available for class programmer also so when we create an object of class programmer both this variable salary and bonus will be available for that those objects and this is the representation of inheritance in a class diagram employee is a parent class and program as a subclass and see this diagrammatic representation of inheritance now we will see what are the different types of inheritance available these are the different types of inheritance available single inheritance multi-level inheritance hierarchical inheritance multiple inheritance and hybrid inheritance so when we say single inheritance as you can see the picture one subclass will be having only one parent class that is known as single inheritance here class B is the subclass or child class and class A is the parent class class B is inheriting only one class and that is class A that is why it is said to be single inheritance second type is multi-level as you can see it is going level by level downwards so here class B is the child class of class A so class B will get all the methods and variables defined inside class A class C is the subclass or child class of class B so class C will get all the methods and variables inside class uh, that's available inside class B but you must remember class B is the child class of class A so class B contains all the variables from class uh, all the variables and methods from class A plus its own variables and methods so all those variables and methods that class B got from class A plus its own variables and methods will be available inside class C so that is known as multi-level inheritance here we have shown only three levels it doesn't mean that we can access only three levels we can implement any number of levels downwards but here what you have to remember is at a time one class inherits only one parent class here class B is having only one parent class that is class A similarly class C is also uh, only having one parent class at a time that is class B but indirectly class C also inherits class A but even then it is not a direct relationship we can say class A is the grandparent of class C class B is the parent of class C next is hierarchy as you can see there is some, some kind of hierarchy that is shown here we have one class that is class A this class A is getting inherited by class B and class C and next this class B will be inherited by some other classes class C will be inherited by some other classes and it will go like that that type of inheritance is known as hierarchical inheritance next we have multiple inheritance when we say multiple we know that it is more than one so multiple inheritance means one subclass will be inheriting more than one class at a time so in this example class C is inheriting class A and class B at the same time both class A and class B are the parent classes of class C so class C is having multiple parents that is why we are saying it is multiple inheritance or such kind of inheritance as are known as multiple inheritance so you must be able to differentiate between multi-level and multiple then comes the hybrid inheritance as you can see this picture we have one parent class class B and class C inherits class A and this class B and class C 
which are the children of class A are getting inherited by class D. So th this class D is having two parents at a time. Class B and class C is having only one parent at a time. So this kind of inheritance is known as hybrid inheritance. Even though these are the different types of inheritances available, Java does not support multiple and hybrid inheritance. Okay, Java does not support multiple and hybrid inheritance. So in Java we can implement only single inheritance, multi-level inheritance and hierarchy. It is not possible to inherit two classes at a time by a single class in Java. And why Java does not support multiple inheritance? It is to reduce the complexity. So in Java we cannot implement multiple and hybrid inheritance. That means we cannot write a subclass which inherits more than one class at a time in Java. We will see an example of single inheritance and multi-level inheritance. As you can see we have created one class named animal. It is having one method that is eat and the access level is default. We have not used any keyword here so it, the access level is default. We are creating another class named dog which is inheriting the class animal. So this method eat will be available inside class dog also. Along with that method dog also have its own method. The method name is bark. Okay, so when we create an object of class dog, that object will be having two methods. One method is bark that belongs to dog itself and the other, uh, other method is method eat that this class got from its parent class animal. So here this class dog is extending only one class. So it is an example for single inheritance. A class having only a single parent that is known as single inheritance and see how we are accessing it we are creating the object of class dog here and we are calling the method bark and eat d dot bark and d dot eat here d dot eat will work because this method is a method that class dog got from its parent class animal okay so all the objects of class dog will be having two methods one method is of the class dog itself and the other one is a method that this class got from its parent class animal. This example shows how multi-level inheritance looks like. Again we have class animal. There is one method named eat here. Under class dog which extends animal. So this is one of the child of this class animal. Inside that we have one method that is bark. Now we have another class baby dog which inherits class dog so you must picturize it animal at the top then it is being inherited by class dog and dog is getting inherited by baby dog okay so when we create an object of class baby dog it will contain the method weep because this method is inside the class baby dog plus the method it got from class dog which is, is which is its parent class what are the methods available inside class dog one is the method bark which belongs to class dog itself plus the method class dog got from its parent class animal that is eat so in total baby dog objects will have three methods one is weep then bark and then eat so when we create an object of class baby dog by using that object we can call all these three methods because this object will get a copy of all those three methods even if we have written only one method inside the baby dog it is possible to access all the other methods because of inheritance that is the usage of inheritance and that is what we say code reusability i hope it is we shall conclude now so we discussed about inheritance, definition of inheritance, how we can implement inheritance in Java, the different types of inheritance and examples of simple and multi-level inheritance. Now we have one more topic to be discussed. They are the keywords super and protected related to inheritance that we will see in the next video lecture.
थैंक यू सो मच